On March 1st, 2024, we got the successor to Barbenheimer known as Megamind versus the Dune 2 Syndicate. With a topic sentence like this, you'd expect me to review both movies, right? Well, I decided to just talk about Dune 2 today as I have a little special video for Megamind vs. the Doom Syndicate. I will show no mercy towards you. But I'm going to bottle those special emotions for now because I'm excited to talk about a really good movie today. Dune Part 2 is an amazing film, and this is coming from someone who liked Part 1 but didn't really love it as much as everyone else. This was mainly due to the overly drawn out plot that didn't really lead to a satisfying ending to the first part for me. However, all that movie's strengths kept me in awe to the point where I would watch Part 2 of this movie in theaters, despite me not thinking Part 1 was amazing. I was more so hoping that the second part would learn from the first movie's mistakes and improve upon them for a much better experience for general moviegoers, and that way, I can possibly end up becoming a diehard Dune fan like all the cool kids out there. And what do you know, Dune Part 2 gave me almost everything I could have possibly wanted, and then some. Okay, maybe it does have those rare slow portions of the movie, but way less than the first one, which I know a handful of people didn't like because of that reason, but as someone who didn't like that about the first film, I think I digested mostly everything they served here, and it was a delicious main course. It is going to be a little challenging to talk about this thing without spoiling it, but I think I know enough to give a pretty sizable spoiler-free review. To start with, Dune Part 2 keeps one of the movie's biggest strengths in terms of how stunning the visuals are and how well played the choreography is. The look of this empty desert manages to be so well detailed in almost every way, and some of the special effects like the worms traveling through the sand and the sandworms themselves don't look cheap at all and blend in with the world super well. And just some of the shots of the location during the night or at sunset are just breathtaking and really show that this is one of those movies that use their expensive budget to their fullest potential. The fight scenes were another one of the first movie's biggest strengths, and they are even better here. They all feel so intense and the choreography is just so mesmerizing that you will be on the edge of your seat to see if a character dies or makes it out alive. Hans Zimmer also delivers on that score just like he always does. I've basically loved all his soundtracks, and this one of course is no exception. The casting also knocks it out of the park with great performances from Timothée Chalamet, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, Christopher Walken, Josh Borland, and so much more that really give it their all in this movie, and it's hard to imagine other actors fulfilling these roles and, and delivering an impact on their characters in the same way. Probably my favorite actor in the film had to be Austin Butler as Faye Ratha. This guy practically stole the show in every scene he's in. He gives off this creepy and psychotic vibe to his character that overall makes him a force to be reckoned with. Speaking of characters, what the Dune movie easily gets praised for the most is the writing when it comes to, to characters and their stories. Part 2 really expands on these characters in a way that is game-changing and emotionally impactful on their personality and how they interact with others while also introducing new ones and giving larger roles to previous characters from the last film. The main protagonist, Paul Atreides, is one of the most perfect examples of this factor, as we see him now exiled and having to go into hiding after the events of the first film, where he is now forced to join this new army to aid in fighting the war. Throughout this time here, he begins to gain more and more respect from these new people, to the point where he takes his duty to a whole new level that his audience has split views on. On one hand, most people respect him due to living up to his destiny, but on the other hand, some of the people who love him for who he is are upset by this change and grow worried about his well-being and want to make sure he doesn't lose the person he once was. This can be shown through the character of his love interest, Chani, who grows a great respect for him upon his time in the army, and you really start to feel for her as Paul slowly starts to change into a completely different person than what she fell in love with in the first place. This movie really evolves Paul and does a great job challenging him as a character, and the ending of the movie will leave you walking out of the theater just begging for Part 3 to be released already. Overall, Dune Part 2 was a much more satisfying experience than I could have ever expected for someone like me. If you didn't like the slow pacing and messy story of the first movie, the second movie I would recommend you give it a chance, as it practically fixes all those issues to the point where I can confidently call this a near-perfect experience, and I cannot wait for the 
this trilogy to end for when we get part three. Overall, this movie gets a super solid and high nine out of ten. And hey, maybe I might bump it up once I eventually once I eventually rewatch it in the future. With all of that said, these popcorn buckets look awesome. I love how they incorporated the sand word on top of that with all those teeth. It makes me think if I stuck my hand in it, I would get painfully stuck like I did with a wipes bottle in third grade and needed the teachers to pull it out. Buy this bucket. It's peak.